Hi, I'm Ryan from Yellow Card, and you're watching punkvideosrock.com. Hey guys, Robert Herrera here with punkvideosrock.com. We're hanging out at the Fox Theater with Ryan Key of Yellow Card. How's it going, buddy? Good, man. How are you? Doing good, man. I'm super excited. Finally, a uh, good Charlotte and Yellow Card tour. Yeah, we're excited, man. It's, this tour's been a long time in the making. Yeah, what happened? Why, why did it take so long? Um, it's actually kind of awesome. Uh, our band sort of had a rocky past. Oh, really? Yeah, and okay. uh, or like back to 2004 warp tour there uh -huh. was some issues and um they never i don't you know they, they were there was kind of a handshake resolve at the end of mm -hmm. it all but it was never you know whatever there was never any hanging out or anything after yeah. no shows being played or anything like that so um when we started working on the new record um on uh, on twitter mm -hmm. actually benji posted um a, a tweet that said basically we've had our differences in the past but i'm really mm. excited about the new yellow card oh, record crazy. so we were all like wow that's pretty epic you that's know that's really good so wrote him back and and got in touch with his manager and and mm. he and i started talking and emailing and just mm. sort of you know I, we didn't even really dwell we yeah. just started from there that's you crazy know? and um no i guess no one knew that yeah well i mean you know <laughs> I, it's he put it out on 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 twitter so it's not yeah. something that's like a secret you know yeah, what I mean? yeah exactly uh, but it, but after we started talking we just both thought you know god it would be so awesome if we could play some shows together and cool. and um it just worked out that we had these few weeks to work to mm -hmm. do it and um it, it's awesome i mean last night was amazing in, yeah. in san diego i can it's, imagine yeah it's funny a lot of kids say you know or, or not even kids but a lot of fans mm -hmm. say um you know this tour oh it just takes me back my, my 16 year old <laughs> self is so excited to go last night i was watching good charlotte and i was like oh man my my 24 year old self meant. you know what i mean i was like <laughs> got a few years on that but still it was definitely yeah i mean it's it's awesome i mean you know and i think what we're both sort of trying to do though is is do this and and do it for the fans who have been with us for mm. all this time but also to say you know we're still making records yeah. we're still we're not we're not just doing this as some kind of nostalgic event exactly it's, we're out here because we're still playing shows and do. we're still making records and yeah. um you know it's you know we played a bunch of new songs last night and it was awesome so we're did you see like uh, any crowd favorites so far, even though it was your first show for this I don't, tour? Yeah, no, I think it's too early to tell on the, on mm -hmm. the new ones. I mean, obviously, uh, we've been playing um, For You and Your Denial and Hang You Up, which are kind of the two single the two songs right now, yeah. off the record. Um, and, and, you know, fans love those songs. So we're trying out some new ones that we've gotten a lot of feedback about on nice. the online. Um, and uh, last night was amazing. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, That's great. I'm sure this whole tour will be so. Yeah, it's um, awesome. While you guys were on hiatus, I, I was really curious uh, as to know, um, did you guys ever get to a point where you needed to actually get a job? Yes. And what did you end up doing and what was it like I having had, a job again? I had two. Um, I first started, I was out, out here um, working on a side project with mm. Sean O'Donnell, who's our new bass player. And um, when we decided that we were going to make a yellow card record uh, obviously we stopped working on that stuff but that was sort of critical mass where it was like there's just i was just done i was tapped out yeah. so i went back home um i was out here in san diego working with him but i moved back to georgia where i live where mm -hmm. my house is or was and um i started working for my uncle in north georgia he's yeah. a tree surgeon so okay i was like dang. outside like climbing trees with yeah. chainsaws and, and like dropping huge <laughs> trees to the ground it crazy. was it was nuts man like completely different from crazy the manual labor like you know but yeah. it was it the money was actually really great and it was family and it was just like mm. something i could do really quick and you know um i knew that we were going to make a record and things would would get back to normal hopefully to at some point soon. so i just needed to get through but then i got a job offer out in la that was that was much more fitting to what i wanted to do mm. and um i was doing the audio at um the W Hotel on, on t in Hollywood, the okay. Dre's nightclub on yeah. top of the hotel, which is not my scene at all, the nightclub <laughs> thing, but um, I was doing sound there for the DJs and stuff, and, and uh, it was cool. I mean, you know, the thing about it was I haven't been in a situation like that for 10 or 11 years yeah. where I've had, like, coworkers and, and other people that I wasn't with every day. You know, like, exactly. I, met, I made so many new friends. That was the best <laughs> part of it, honestly. Did it, did it get to a point where it was you were working with, like, fans at listened to before i mean or? yeah there were definitely tons of you yeah. know uh, it was a lot of there was a lot of working and people coming up and going like what are you doing you yeah know? <laughs> and uh and i would just you know be honest with them and say look i mean i know we were on mtv everyone thinks we're millionaires yeah, but exactly. that's just not the truth you take two or three years off from your job yeah. you can't just last you can't forever just survive. Yeah, exactly. you know what i mean i didn't like hit a a, a, a million dollar stock market <laughs> you know success while we were making money back exactly. in the day so it's i mean you know, I just was really honest with them saying this is I, I want to go make a new record This is what I have to do to get to that place and mm. I'm willing to do whatever it takes, you know Cool, cool. um 
like about a week ago, um, Sean twittered that this may be the best set ever. Mm. So um, that's a pretty bold thing to say. So why, why, why do you think he would say such thing? Like, what are we expecting for this tour? I, I don't know. There's just something cool about it. There's just something rad. I, I, and actually, we're playing three shows that we're playing long. We're headlining. Um, mm. It's not a co-headline show. We're okay. just playing just us and Runner Runner and then like a local band okay. on three of the shows. That that may be the set he was talking. I mean, it's a little bit longer and mm. we're dropping some pretty old stuff into that, that set. So um, nothing in particular to this and, set? No, this one's amazing too. It just mm. There's something about the way it flows that we it just came together and yeah. it's, it's just perfect. It feels perfect. Like last <laughs> night... I don't. I don't remember ever playing a first night of a tour with a new set list, you know, songs in a yeah. new order, and just flowing through it with no like no one was. It's all natural. There was no stress or like like hecticness. Mm-hmm. Like oh shit, we have to change songs really fast. Mm-hmm. We have to change guitars. Really, it just was perfect. It was like nice. I don't know. It was. I think that's what he meant. It was just, it's the perfect set Got for it. us. So. Um, what What's the behind the scenes of setting up? You know. Um, of build of you know preparing for your sets for every tour. Um, usually, I, I I sort of come up with what I what I think it should be, and mm-hmm. I and you know I email it out for suggestions and mm-hmm. say this is what I think we should do, and explain you know this should go into that, and this would do if you guys have any ideas you know right back. And that was the other thing is I sent this one in, and there's usually tons of comments and shit gets changed around, but I sent this to everyone, and everyone just wrote back like sweet, awesome, <laughs> and I was like yes, <laughs> you know. Is that um, a good thing or a bad it's thing? It's great. For, that means everyone was like yes, that's a good job. <laughs> you know right away yeah. no editing needed <laughs> so um and and we ended up not changing anything in rehearsal either so it's good cool uh back in uh 2006 i remember you had surgery mm-hmm. uh so what exactly happened during that time um years of drug and alcohol abuse <laughs> leads to your vocal cords breaking down and stop <laughs> too much touring yeah stop working <laughs> and that too i mean early on you know you're playing with you know, floor wedges and, and no monitor guy and no, you're mm-hmm. just screaming your head off to get to hear yourself. And I mean, that does damage for sure, but I definitely was not taking care of myself. I was, mm-hmm. when we, when, when the band was big, I mean, there was a lot of bright and a lot of dark, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, so I, I definitely was partying pretty hard and, and, uh, I don't regret it because I know what my limit, I know what to do now and, yeah. and I've got that. I mean, out, it's I got a, it out it's of always my a system, lesson learned, you know, absolutely. Um, and the surgery was the biggest wake-up call for me. You mm-hmm. know, it made me realize, like, okay, it's it's time to not to stop being this person that you're that you weren't supposed to be. You know what yeah. I mean? This isn't where I wanted to go with this. And and uh, the fact that we're here now and we made this record and there's just such a positive energy around the band and everyone's so focused. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you know, like you said, it's just lessons learned. You know. Now, because of that, is there things you have to do differently as far as your vocals? Uh, or I just am more conscious. I take way better care of myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I. I don't drink as much. I don't, you know, I make, usually if there's a day off, I'll, I'll go out and hang out with everyone, but, yeah. um, you know, no dairy and warm up every day for like about an hour a day and watch what I eat, watch what I, you know, it's just, yeah. I, I'm really way more conscious of it. And to be honest, it's as fun as all the partying was and, and all the crazy Hollywood shit we got to do mm-hmm. and at such a young age. And, um, it, it's much more, um, fulfilling to go out on stage every night, mm-hmm. get through an hour long set and just be totally happy with how you performed yeah exactly you know what i mean it's it's so much more amazing and i wish i had known that then but it's <laughs> well whatever. you know you live and you learn is right? what it is yeah so you know that's cool um going back to when you guys were first signed as well um do you remember what your first uh expense was your first paycheck what did you go out and blow it on uh i bought my first car actually mm-hmm. um i bought a volkswagen r32 in 2004 okay. and uh wasn't anything ridiculous i mean it's like you know, just, just to get to Volkswagen. practice, <laughs> but um, I mean, it was super cool. It was a rad little car, and it was brand new, and it was cool, really awesome feeling for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, that was definitely the first purchase I made. I was still living, you know, like renting a room in a buddy's house yeah. at the time. But that was the first thing I bought. Okay, um, you're a record right now. When you're through thinking, say yes. Uh, you guys have two uh, singles out right now. Yeah. Um, what could you tell us about a possible third uh, or upcoming single? We don't know yet. There's two. We're, we're kind of talking about either With You Around or Sing For Me. Both mm-hmm. songs are getting really good response from fans. Um, you know, and, and I don't think we're really going to go for radio or anything like mm-hmm. that with the next one. We're just kind of going to do what we can with it online and probably make a video or something, you know. Um, I would be awesome if we got to do both songs, but we'll, yeah. we'll see. Um, it, but it's between those two, I think. Okay. Uh, do you have a song favorite for this album? Um, I really love the second to last song, "See Me Smiling." Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know why. I just, I think it's just, just raging and and uh, 
I wrote it for about a, a friend of mine that Pat, the same guy that I wrote View from Heaven about. Yeah. Um, and so it was cool uh, for my buddies back home to hear that song. I mean, <laughs> it's been, you know, 10 years since he passed and yeah. eight years since I wrote that song, the last song. So it was cool for everybody to hear that song. And, and I got a lot of like emails and text messages and phone calls saying like, wow, did you, you know, you knocked it out of the park with that song. That's and it, awesome. It's awesome for all of us. So, um, I love that song. Cool. Um, what do you guys have planned for the rest of the tour? I know you guys have a lot of tours, uh, but yeah. what else do you guys have planned for the rest of the year? Europe. Oh, sorry. In order, it goes South America, Europe, Australia, maybe like Eastern, like Asian, like um, Thailand, China, okay. around Australia. We don't know yet. Um, and then US and then back to Europe. And are these and like you guys headlining or are you guys going um, out with someone else or? South America is headlining Europe okay. is festivals and okay. so a few a couple of headlining shows we're actually doing this really rad acoustic show in London mm -hmm. if in a 350 cap room wow um, but it's gonna be like a full band show with acoustic guitars and, nice. and a little a small drum kit and um, so that should be awesome it's sold out in like under an hour it's that's pretty crazy. rad um, so that's we're gonna crazy. we're gonna do that and um, and then and then then the fall Australia is Soundwave Revolution mm -hmm. fest which is a festival Van Halen is playing it. Oh, it's, it's gonna be pretty rad. That's gonna be intense. Yeah. yeah, and then and then we headline the fall in the U.S. and then we headline uh, in Europe in December, November, December. Okay, cool. Uh, do you want to give out any last words to the fans of viewers out there? Um, just keep spreading the word that there's a record out. You know, it's still. I mean, there's so much. Uh, there's so many choices for fans nowadays mm. because of the internet. You know, exactly. you, have, you get, you're getting blasted on your your Facebook and your Twitter feed and everything every minute with somebody else. It ha you know, so it's hard to keep up and hard to, mm. you know. But if you're a fan of our band and 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 you love our music, then then uh, we're still doing this and we have you know just tell your friends and go check out the new record if you haven't because we'll be on tour all year and 